Hello all, today we will be talking about material instances. If you are interested in world building, material design, you need to know how to create material instances. And today I will show an example where we will create a material using the default starter pack content and create instances from that material. Let's jump in. In your content drawer, we will right click, go to new material. I will call this M underscore simple wood material. And I will double click to open this up. And we can see we have our blank slate here. I will right click and I will type texture sample. And I can use the browse here to find some content that I have in my starter pack. So I'll type wood and I will use our walnut underscore D for diffuse. And I will do a control C and control V of this texture sample. And I will now go and get my M, my underscore M. So I'm going to use this as the roughness and I'll use this as the diffuse. So I'm going to drag off from my RGB and I will say desaturation. I'm going to just use this as, you know, I'm going to desaturate this and then we're going to overlay it with a color tint so that we can use our own color of choice. So I'll drag off of this and I will say blend underscore overlay. And I will pull off here and I will say uh, constant three vector. I'll right click this and say convert to parameter. And I will call this wood tint color. I will drag this result into base color. And now we can see that we should have when we change this to from anything but black, that we can now tint our wood. So I'll leave this pink color for now. I'm going to change that in the end. Now let's take our roughness map and do some work with that. So what I will do is I'll drag off this and I will say cheap contrast. And I'm going to use this so that I can easily change the levels similar. So it describes here, similar to how you might in Photoshop. So this is a really easy way to kind of ch change the levels of your black and white. I'll pull off here and say scalar parameter. And I will call this uh, BW underscore contrast. This will just be our contrast parameter. And I'll set this value to 0.1. And I will drag off of this and say raise black levels by percentage. I will do a control C, control V of this, or I could just drag off here and say scalar parameter. Um, either work. So I'll just, you know, now that I have this, I'll just do this. And I'll call this grain contrast. Or I'll just say, um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. And I will now drag this into my roughness map. I'll grab my texture sample one more time. I'm going to control C, control V, and I'm going to find my normal map, which will have the underscore N and I'll drag this into my normal. So let's comment this out just so it's a little bit cleaner, uh, drag over this and press the C button on my keyboard for a comment. I'll say normal. I will grab this and I'll say roughness. Spelling is hard. And I'll grab this and I'll say color. So now it's a little bit organized for when we come back next time. So now what we can do is I'm going to change this back to like a tan or something so it looks more normal. And we're going to go find this in our browser. So I can either magnify to it here or I could use control space to just bring up my content drawer. So I will, now that I have this, I'm going to right click and I will say create material instance. And I will keep the prefix of M underscore wood material so I can just easily see where it came from. But let's call this shiny dark brown. I'll, and now, now I'll open this up. So I'll double click into this and Let's say I want this to be a very dark, rich looking wood. So I'm going to change the sort of color overlay. So it is this, you know, really walnut kind of 
wood color. And then now these variables here, so I'm gonna set this ideally to actually 0.7 in the parent, just so that it starts off with a good base. So if I reset this to the normal value of 0.7, this is my starting point. So it's a, it's a shiny rich wood and we can see that we have the, you know, this sort of roughness in, in the cracks here. So this is a really good starting point. And if I scale these values, I can either make it more dull or more shiny. Realistically, I don't want a super shiny wood. So I'm going to start something like this. And I can use this to sort of adjust the contrast in those cracks, as you can see. So I'm going to put this on a mesh in my environment. And I will go shapes, cube. I'll drag this to the floor. I'm going to scale this to 441. And I'm going to drag this on here to apply the material. So a lot of times it can be helpful to see the material as it's reflected in your environment. So I'm going to drag this here. And so I can see my material on one side and adjust my parameters there. And also see how it's updated in the real world. So I'm going to drag a few of these. Like that. And now I can see that as I adjust my material instance, I can see the effect of how that material appears in my level. So if I want it shiny, I can make it shiny. If I want it a little more dull, you know, so something like this, you know, maybe looks good to me. I like a little bit of a duller wood. It looks maybe more realistic. And then as, you know, say I wanted to duplicate these, what I can do is now I can create a new material instance. So I'm going to type control and D on my keyboard. And let's make this a dull red. And so I'll double click to open this up. And I'm going to make this wood tint color kind of a saturated red. So something like this, like a cherry, maybe. Um, and I'm going to drag this over to the side, my level. And I will, because I already have this selected here in my content drawer, I'll hit this left arrow to apply it to these four selected meshes. Now I can, you know, also adjust this as I want. So I'm going to make it dull, like I said before. Maybe I'll make a, yeah, I'm going to just kind of make it like that. So it has a bit of contrast to the other one. So here I have my, you know, shiny wood with a little bit of dullness in the cracks. Here, you know, let's make this even more dull so it's a little rougher. And this is how you can create um, material instances to leverage the logic that happens in a parent material so that you can reuse as much as possible. I uh, hope you learned something from today's video. Material instances are super useful as you're building out your game worlds. And if you enjoyed this video, uh, like and subscribe for more Unreal Engine 5 tutorials. Thanks all.